Hey YouTube, I am without my mic today, so I'm gonna talk really loud. <laughs> Hopefully the sound comes through okay. I had to um, travel home for a family wedding and I didn't bring everything I needed, so I'm trying to record this video for you and just fingers crossed it comes out all right. Just turn up your volume really loud because <laughs> I am micless. Today I'm going to run through some rehab numbers for you. If you follow our channel, you know we do something called Deal or Dud, where we talk about, we run you through the numbers of a deal and talk about whether it's good or whether it's a dud. And we've recently been quote unquote flipping some properties. We actually don't full out flip anymore. We just buy houses, clean them out, and stick them right back on the market with an agent. And we're still making our average profit, which for the past few years has been hung right around 35,000 per flip. I'm in kind of a lower price range market, so that's pretty good for our market. And I'm gonna walk you through every detail. So this is gonna be a pretty detailed deal or done. So I'll show you some pictures of the property. I'll talk to you about what my, um, the guy that does my inspection said when he walks through, we'll run through all the numbers and I'm gonna show you my actual profit. So you know when people take a check, because you can't flip a house without posting a check on social media and showing people your check from settlement, that check from settlement isn't usually the actual profit. So I'm gonna show you my HUD from when I bought it, my HUD from when I resold it, and how I figure out what my actual profit is, how much goes to taxes. I mean, I'm going to be a 150% transparent with you because if you follow this channel, you know authenticity and transparency are my thing. I'm not going to BS you about flipping and how much you can make on a flip project. So I'm gonna show you what we projected and what we actually made. So hang in there, it's gonna be a really good detailed one. My name is April Crosley, I'm a real estate investor. I'm based out of Berks County, Pennsylvania. I am currently traveling the country in, the R in my RV with my husband. So today's my last day in Pennsylvania. I just flew home for a couple days and I'm flying back out to Utah and we're actually heading to Colorado, which I'm super excited about. I flip houses, I have two companies that flip houses in Pennsylvania. I also buy and hold small multifamily. I do a little bit of private lending. So we kind of do like a mix of things. I'm super into like learning more about syndications, buying larger apartment buildings. We're always looking for more passive income and bigger stuff to buy at this point and bigger stuff to lend on is really our primary focus. But today I want to talk to you about a flip that we did recently. And I'll show you a couple of these over the next few weeks because we kind of just like boom, boom, boom. We're banging out a couple of flips in a row here because we don't actually have to renovate them anymore. If people are willing to pay so much more for them and we're selling these to investors. <laughs> so we're really good at the sales process. We're contracting these with sellers. We're super good at helping sellers and building rapport. And we're selling them to other investors and making the same profit we would have if we would have renovated them. So what does that tell you? Other investors are paying a lot of money for stuff. <laughs> like totally speculating and on average paying like thirty-five to like $45,000 more for a property. It is worked out beautifully for me because my holding time is like a month and a half and I don't have to like work with any renovations. I literally just work out with work with my trash out crew and my dumpster company and that's it. So bear with me because I have stuff I want to share with you. So I have to do a screen share. So I'm going to share my desktop and I hope this works out. Okay. Ignore my zoom. So these are the numbers when I originally, um, was looking at purchasing the property. So I just want to take you through what my thought process was with it. So let me see if I can zoom in because this is probably really tiny for you guys. Let's do 125% and see how that looks. That's much better. Um, so my original thought was, and this is our spreadsheet. It's called our deal analyzer package. It actually breaks down for you like the deal summary, rehab costs, profitability if you flip it, profitability if you hold it as a rental and then we put all our comps over here I have that tab blank right now um, but this is what we fill out and we send to our private lender so everything is in one place for them makes it real simple you can find this spreadsheet on our website lazygirlrei.com 
is awesome. Our lenders love it. It really summarizes it for them. So I put together this deal package and send it to my private lender. So my thought was we bought this house for $90,000 and I'm going to show you pictures of the house. It was a hoarder situation, not the worst hoarder situation we've seen, like a three to five day clean out maybe. Um, but I mean, we've had a hoarder situation where we filled eight 40 yard dumpsters and it took us like two weeks or more to clean out. So we've seen much worse hoarders than this one, but this was a hoarder situation. So the purchase price was 90. The ARV was, this is an as is ARV. This is cleaning it out and sticking it right back on the market. So I was like, if we buy it for 90, clean it out, stick it right back on the market and sell it for 155. This is what it'll look like. So this is my transfer tax to buy. We pay both sides of the transfer tax, my title insurance, my closing fees, holding time three months. I actually held it for a month and a half. So we got it clean out. We only had it for a month and a half. So we cut down on that. My rehab costs, I don't think we're 5,000. This was just my original sheet of what I was projecting. But I wasn't sure like when you have a quarter house, you don't know what you're gonna find. So sometimes when you clean it out, you find other repairs that you have to make or someone's not gonna be able to purchase it. We were aiming for a cash buyer because you'll see it needed a lot of renovation, but you just, you never know. So we like to put extra padding in there. So this is like your annual taxes or monthly, this is annual taxes, monthly insurance, utility and lawn. And then over here in the white, it breaks it down for three months. Like if you only have it for three months here, this is what it breaks it down to. So say you change this to six months, see how it makes those numbers in the white higher? That's what it's gonna cost you for six months. So it automatically calculates for you based on your holding time. Then your transfer tax to resell, your closing fees, paying a buyer's agent. We always list with a real estate agent. This market is so crazy. I love listing with a real estate agent because people, we're just getting bombarded, like multiple offers. And I don't want to deal with that stuff myself. And my agents are really good about like countering back and negotiating. And so they are like a lifesaver to me because once this thing goes back on the market, I don't want anything to do with it. Like I need someone that's going to take care of the process and everything for me. And they are wonderful at that. So I will pay an agent all day long, all day long. So we um, had like total funds that we were gonna request and borrower contributed funds. I actually, you'll see um, my lender that I use really, really trusts me and she's been with me a long time. So I borrowed the whole thing. I'm gonna show you what I borrowed. I'm gonna show you my actual HUDs from closing. So I was gonna contribute some money to it and have them pay like another portion of it. And then I used a different lender and I was like, they're just gonna fund 100% because they trust me and that's what they do. So my projected profit was 42,000. Now in this situation, because we're only holding it three months, and I know we're probably not even gonna hold it that long, so we're just gonna clean out and put it right back on the market, I always pay my lenders a minimum. So you have to make it worth your private lender's time. So what I'll usually do is I will pay my private lenders like three or four months worth of interest, even though I only held the property for a month and a half, because that makes it worth their time, okay? So let me minimize this, and I'm gonna try to find some other things that I wanted to show you. Here's pictures of the property. I don't wanna spend too much time on this, you guys. I just wanna flip through and show you the amount of stuff, and just let you know that it's very hard to see um, the more stuff there is in a house, the harder it is to see, like, what exactly is going on there. So the kitchen's super dated, doesn't, I mean, it, look at that floor, like, ugh, you know? So you have, like, little pathways throughout the house. So this whole thing just needed, like, so much renovation. There were bathroom leaks. The windows were, like, super crusty. All the light fixtures are old. We had some knob and tube wiring in the basement. You see how you have like plaster coming off the walls there. My guy is like really good at taking pictures and getting me all the nitty gritty photos that I need to see. There you have a bathroom leak coming through the ceiling. Again, old windows. I don't wanna bore you guys too much. There are so many pictures. And I don't want to keep you on YouTube all day. <laughs> so this is us going upstairs. See how there's some damage to the walls. 
again, damage to the ceilings. The roof was okay. So we, there was a lot of stuff to clean out of this house. I believe the basement was also packed. There's wallpaper everywhere. Everything is just really dated. And this woman lived here a long time and could no longer take care of the house. So that tub definitely needs some love. There's some tiles coming off the wall and probably completely needs to be ripped out. Loving the blue. We have a lot of blue and pink bathrooms up here in the Northeast. I don't know what you guys have elsewhere in the country. You can drop a comment <laughs> and let me know. But I mean like pink, like Pepto-Bismol pink is super common. So this is the attic, it's packed. Basement's the same way. So it's just like really full. So we projected that we could probably spend about $65,000 to renovate this house, like 65,000 in rehab costs, um, maybe even up to 70 by the time we, we would go in and gut the kitchen, gut the bathroom. You see that sewer pipe? Oh, there's another picture of it. Like you gotta check out all the stuff. We have basements here. I know some of y'all don't have basements where you live, but we spend a lot of time in the basement because that's where all our mechanicals are and we get water in our basements. You see how those joists look wet? They have mold on them. That's coming from something leaking. Just no good. I mean, this house needed a lot of work. So we have the option to make her an offer based on us just reselling it quickly on the market or make her an offer based on us um, completely rehabbing it. So you have to know what other investors are willing to pay in your area. Once you have a handle on they're willing to pay more than you, why are you renovating stuff? <laughs> why? It's totally not worth your time or energy, especially with the rising costs of things like lumber and everything. So what we do is we run our numbers and we're like, this is what we could offer this person if we renovated it, fully renovated it and held it for six months. And this is what we could offer this person if we just cleaned it out and put it right back on the market and found someone that was willing to pay way more for us than us. Now this house, not really livable. I mean, I guess you could say it was livable once we cleaned it out, it had an intact kitchen, which is important, but an investor ended up buying it from us. So maybe they have cheaper labor than I do. Maybe they love renovating houses. I don't know what the case is. All I know is the case was I didn't want to keep it. So you get the idea, it's in a really cute, really desirable neighborhood and really good school district that people love. So it was a really big house. So that's the Bilco door. I'm going to show you guys some HUDs now from purchase and resale. So this is um, from, oh, that's not the one I wanted to show you, but I do need that one up. I'm going to show you, ah, I'm going to show you this one. So this is our purchase HUD. Okay. So we bought it for 95,000. So I think on my spreadsheet, I projected we were going to buy it for 90. And then we gave the seller an offer of 90 and she countered back at 95 or like 90. Oh, she actually wanted a hundred. So we met her halfway and paid her 95. And I was like, eh iffy about the 95 just because you can't tell a lot from it being a hoarder house but we made out pretty good so we contracted at 95 so at a hud you usually start like at the bottom and work your way up so they these are all our settlement charges so you have to know what all your settlement charges are in closing costs recording fees title insurance okay and then we paid 95, so I'm gonna show you here that we paid 95, these are my settlement charges, okay? And then prorated school taxes, so they'll prorate the school taxes, and then we put $1,000 down, but I borrowed $125,000. Why did I do that? So I paid 95, and I borrowed 125. So I borrowed my purchase price, my closing costs, and a little bit of money for rehab in case I had to do any 
rehab to the property above and beyond cleaning it out. So I didn't borrow like 60,000 to do a full rehab. I just borrowed 95 plus closing costs, plus a little bit of padding, like five to $10,000 in case we had to do any, actually I think it ended up being like 27,000 in case we ended up having to do any additional rehab. So I over borrowed and was my private lender okay with that? Yes. Will your private lender be okay with that? Not necessarily. This person's worked with me for a long time and I told them we're going to buy the property, clean it out, put it right back on the market. So I don't need the full rehab funds, but I'm going to borrow a little bit of rehab funds up front just in case something pops up that we need to fix before someone else will buy it. She was like, totally fine. It's basically like borrowing a first little rehab draw, but I'm getting that rehab draw back at settlement. So I'll show you that. So down here at the bottom, I'm the borrower. So I'm, I got $27,084.52 back at settlement. That's what I got back at settlement. And the seller out of the 95, she got 66,879.73, okay? So she had a mortgage that she had to pay off of 25,939. That's up here, shows her mortgage and her settlement charges. So her mortgage she had to pay off so out of that 95, she got 66,879. We got $27,000 back at settlement. Why am I telling you that? Okay. So we bought this house, we cleaned it out and we resold it within a month and a half. So this is my HUD a month and a half later. Now I'm the seller, not the borrower. Okay. So the contract sales price was 155. So I bought a house for $95,000. I cleaned it out. I put it right back on the market and another investor for that same house paid $155,000 for that same house that I paid that I contracted for 95,000. Makes a girl feel good, not going to lie, okay? So this was a flipper that's going to flip it. I don't know, I don't ask questions. So they paid 155, okay? So I got at settlement $15,124.15. This is me over here as the seller. So I could take a picture of a $15,000 check and post it on Facebook and Instagram and be like, 15 grand from settlement today. I actually made more than 15,000. How, how did I make more than 15,000? You're like, where? Where do you see that, April? I don't see that. Remember, I over borrowed by 27,000. So on this HUD, I got $27,000 back. How do I get this thing to move? I got $27,000 back. So I'm gonna show you my breakdown here, my profit breakdown. So let's view a little bit bigger. Okay. We're a little bit smaller. <laughs> there we go. So the balance on my HUD was 15,124 from when I sold it. I put down a thousand dollars of my personal money to buy it. So I wanted to pay myself that back. So I take a thousand dollars off of the 15 comes back to me personally, because I bought this in my company name, but I personally put down the thousand dollars. We put in $3,357 in repairs. Remember I had $5,000 on the spreadsheet? $5,000 I was projecting we were gonna put in repairs. We put in 3,300 to clean it out, dumpsters, everything. That's what it cost us, 3,357. I paid $329 in insurance, but I got 27,000. See how this is a plus mark? 27,000 that I over borrowed that was sitting in my account. So I had the 15,000 from the HUD and the 27,000 that I over borrowed, okay? So I paid the thousand, 3,300 for repairs, 329 for insurance. I paid $2,000 out to someone for a referral fee and I held back in my account. I didn't get any utility bills. So we only had the property for a month and a half. It wasn't long enough for the utility company to send me any bills. So what I do is I hold back a little bit of money just to cover those bills because I know they're going to be coming in. So my profit was $35,322.10. Now, what do I do with that? I take 25% right off the top and put it into a tax account. 
normally I take 25 or 30. I, why do I do one or the other? I don't know. Like I'm just lately doing 25, but some projects I take 30%. I put it, I set it aside in a tax account for the end of the year when I pay my taxes in. So you're going to pay capital gains tax. It's going to be how hefty. So 25% is $8,820. That's why when people show you this big fat check, don't get so excited about it. Like that literally makes me want to cry. <laughs> $8,800 is coming right off and going to the government in a tax account. It's crazy. Then I took 10% and I put it towards marketing. And I actually, for my other business, the marketing is more expensive. It costs me more. So I take 20% and I put it to marketing. This flip company, the marketing doesn't cost as much. We just have better conversion on deals. So I only use 10%. But by the time you whittle down this $35,000, you made $35,000 in profit. 8,800 to tax, 3,500 to marketing, you're left with $22,000, okay? This is what our net profit was after paying taxes, after paying our marketing, after holding back money for utilities, 22,000. So when this is another reason why when people send me a deal package and they say, I'm making $10,000 on this deal, I'm like, $10,000 is nothing. <laughs> like I know it might seem like a big deal when you're a new flipper, but if you run into problems on that house, a little small problem can cost you $5,000. So then you're like only left with five grand. Then you have to pay taxes. Okay. Capital gains tax. Then you have to set money aside to, for your business towards marketing. So that's why I always say for like a light rehab or a house, we just clean out and resell. We aim for 20 grand profit, but you're not like what you're seeing on social media isn't always actually what people are netting. There's more things to the business than you that you have to pay for than you realize. So don't forget to take your money out for taxes and don't forget to take your money out for marketing. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. And I hope you get to buy a house for $95,000, clean it out, hold it for a month and resell it to another investor for 155 because that is just the real estate environment we are in right now, it is insane. We had multiple offers on this house. We actually had, I think someone that wanted to buy it and they only wanted to put a thousand dollars down and I would have sold them the house, but I countered back and told them I wanted five down, five grand down and on a thousand because I wanted to know they were serious and they were like, no, I won't do that. And it was a flipper. And to me, I'm like, if you're a serious flipper and you've got money sitting there in profit, you can put five grand down. So forget you. I'm not selling it to you because that's just a red flag to me that you want to back out. So multiple offers on everything and no need for us to rehab at all because we are really good at getting really good deals. So I hope that deal or done was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments what you liked best about it. Share the video if you think it would be helpful to someone else. Give us a follow on Instagram at April Crosley. You can check us out at lazygirlrei.com. We're on Facebook at Lazy Girl Real Estate Investing. And oh, we have a group on Facebook called RBREI where we talk about just like financial freedom and travel and real estate and how I got from teenage mom to millionaire and flipping houses and everything in between. It's super cool. So thank you guys so much. I will see you next week.